Hey guys, Rob from the future here. Just to let you all know that uh, in my reaction to the uh, uh, top 16 creepiest station IDs video, uh, I might swear a mild amount. So yeah, viewer discretion is advised. But uh, other than that, uh, hope you all enjoy the video. Hey there guys, Robert here, and welcome to episode 49 of Rob Geo Reacts. It has been two weeks since the last episode, and it's now time for another one, guys. Hope y'all excited today. Hope you guys had a great Halloween. As you can see here, I, uh, I'm wearing my Fright Fest shirt. It's a sweater, you idiot. Even though I didn't go this year, uh, oh well. <laughs> uh, let's just cut to the chase. We have four videos to react to for today, starting with... Snowflakes top 16 creepiest station IDs by Snowflakes, which was requested to me by Donald38. So shout out to my man Donald for the request. The link to the original video as well as the link to uh, Snowflakes channel will be in the description down below in, in case if you want to go on ahead and subscribe to their channel and watch the original video to give them lots of support. So yeah. Uh, I got no other fancy talk left for me to say. Now, without any further ado, let's just react to this uh, supposedly creepy video. Hopefully, I don't get uh, nightmares from this, so uh, enjoy. <laughs> Before I start reacting to this video, uh, Donald38 actually strongly recommended me to actually turn on captions for this video. So I'm going to go on ahead and do that. Yes, that's right, Donald. I, I did not forget about turning on captions for this one video, so here we go. This is the top 16 creepiest national station ID slash bumper slash sign offs by Snowflakes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's react. Welcome to my top 16 disturbing station ID slash bumper countdown. First of all, this is not the better than flash from the logos I find myself scared of, but rather what makes them unsettling to many. Um, I, I will avoid various items such as the typical famous scary logo here and there, as well as IDs from cable stations, especially horror ones, so no MTV, Bravo, or horror channel. I will be covering mainly station IDs, bumpers, news intros, or other similar ephemeral media that made its way, that made its way into a much wider terrestrial TV audience, so any national slash regional broadcaster. There is also some of my lame humor on this video to make things a little more feasible. Alright, so... Yeah, I hope you have fun. I hope you, I hope you have fun with this. So this will be purely based on my opinion on how I how, how I react on it. The findings that I have I have used in other people's certain reactions to it. Um, this will pre this will be purely based on my opinion on how I react on it. The findings I have used and other people's certain reactions to it. If you think I omitted something, feel free to mention it in the comments. Although I will hold an honorable mention spot for a few of us. And what else? So anyways, let's kick off October in the best way possible. Or more like end October in the best way possible. Number 16. Ulster Television from Northern England, 1959. I can see why, because the, the music, it, it's, it's kind of soft. I can see why people would be a little scared by it. It's kind of like a lullaby sounding uh, bumper right there. It's just a few more seconds of silence, right? Uh, okay. The first entry in, in the list explains the majority of the types of IDs, bumpers you will see here. Uh, this is mostly in presentation, however. Just imagining something like this appear suddenly on your TV and letting the eeriness pull, your through, pull you through. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this is the tamest of the contenders remaining to be shown here. While I can see myself also giving this... Uh, giving this a soothing vibe, it doesn't seem as right with a bunch of squiggly lines forming to the tune of a music box playing solemnly over the, over the dark. And this idea also seems to be pretty iconic to those Northern Irish residents who settled in with a TV during the majority of 60s BMW television, or black and white television. Something like this won't fly into today's TV branding whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Number 15. Ontario Educational Communications Authority from Ontario, Canada, 
1976. The sound of this one kind of gives me a little bit of a spacey vibe, I'm not gonna lie. I couldn't imagine what various Ontarians would have, would have thought of once these OEC AI events began airing on their channels. The inclusion of watery synth music and darkness are unusual for such branding, although also considering multiple educational companies of Northern America had eerie vibes in their own. The moment I saw the words watery synth music in your reasoning, I immediately thought of the, uh, uh, what was that logo called? I think it was called the Curiosity Company or something like that. It had like these like little watery sound effects in, in the logo. So yeah, I, I guess that came to mind. All three items are creepy in their own right, but it's this third one that still gets a little into my nerves. The ellipsis slowly shooting at you with the usual synth and darkness make it no doubt the eeriest OEC ID. Yeah, I, I, I can see why. Number 14, subtitles will be available for the spot. So yeah, that's why Donald recommended me to put action. So, Canal 3 Rosario, Horario del Prodicion al Mentor from Argentina, 1993. A partir de este momento, finaliza el horario de protección al menor. La presencia de los mismos frente al televisor es responsabilidad absoluta de los señores padres. Okay, I am not really sure if this was an error made by the channel, but this red smiley face appearing with giggling and droning synth music popping out of nowhere surely did affect lots of Argentine children into not watching late night TV. Wait, hold on. Hold on, I, I, I did not hear the music because I was like talking so much, but let, let me hear that. Was there either? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could see why. The music is like a little bit unsettling, I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, well, let's just continue uh, watching the video here. Even with just the announcer, I don't know much about, about the source of this audio. This is still really jarring. Why red for the smiley face? And the sky is too saturated as hell with a purple color. It's, it's kind of inept. Yeah, it's, it's a little unsettling, especially the children. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about this bubble much because it just consists of a still image and an announcer, although it's still weird according to my books, so yeah. Uh, let's just continue on from there at number 13, National Broadcasting Corporation, Southern USA, 1970. That peacock was... What did, hold on. What did the words say? This is just Pirate NBC. Well, just about time to move from another weird bumper to another bizarre one. In this case, this living color thingy, some NBC station aired sometime in 1970. This is yet another one of those that, that, that'll make you question, how did this abomination get its way into my TV? Yeah, that, that peacock, it, it does not look right compared to all the other peacocks that I've seen, you know, in the NBC logos, at least, you know, in the 70s, so. Well, totally, it feels like your mind's own recreate, recreation of what the NBC Peacock Bumper looks like, just as wrong as you were attempting to imagine. Nothing makes sense. This ID is absurdly cheap and budget, and I'm not sure what was the reason for transmitting this. Even, even you hear the familiar living color announcement while it was recorded in boring black and white. Beatles Penguin, pun intended. Yeah, uh... Yeah, the Peacock looks kind of creepy, like I said before. The design is as similar to as the as the original NBC Peacock, and says other words. Uh, it is just there covering. The design isn't as similar as the original NBC Peacock, and it's just there covering most of the screen, just like something risen up from the abyss. Yeah, very creepy NBC Peacock logo. Number twelve is Tele University Tele from Quebec, Canada, nineteen eighty three. The flu music kind of sounds a bit unsettling too, I think. It's a little baby chick that hatched out of his egg. Well, I'm not even going to explain this one. Well, I'm not going to explain this one much further, even as unnerving as the vibe of it is. Probably my terrified young kid, or could be misunderstood by, misunderstood by someone as animal cruelty. 
But according to someone who posted in the comment section of this upload, this is just a baby chick hatching. I mean, I mean, why wouldn't the egg and cracks be there? The total darkness of the environment and the odd flute music, however, makes its premise feel like the exact opposite you would think baby chicks hatching would be. This is just quite of an odd, experimental, focused idea. Yeah, a little, a little, uh, uh, terrifying for some, I guess. Number 11, we have Pan America Television, closed down, Peru, Nexitonia. Number 11. The music is like a little, little distorted, I think. A little distorted. Pantel. This is one of the tamer. This is one of the tamer sign-off IDs that would be shown here. Okay. Um. This is one of the tamer sign-off IDs that will be shown here, although it does feel somewhat eerily hypnotic. The music here is from an, is from an introduction of a Peruvian Criolla song, while this logo keeps glowing over a dark background and some dude delivers his speech over a highly resonant mic. Yeah, like I said, the music was a little bit distorted. So is the mic in question. Uh, apparently, many Peruvians had dreaded memories of this particular sign-off, with, with, with the guitar hook constantly being repeated while the logo stares at you for 20 seconds before doing its last reprise of the day. Others think this was just the main source of nostalgia. We're near the 10 creepiest station IDs for now, so let's get moving quickly. Yeah, yeah, I agree, because I'm recording this video late at night, so yeah. Number 10 is VPRO 3D Ident from the Netherlands, 1971. What the hell is this bumper? You know, like the sound effects. Like, what's up with the moaning, dude? It's just... It... Wow. Those sound effects at the beginning just makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I thought those were moaning sound effects. This list won't feel complete. This list won't feel as complete if I would not insert a single one of these IDs Vanguard social liberal pr Protestant broadcaster VPRO as air during the 70s to early 80s. In my opinion, I think this is their creepiest one for clear reasons. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the main reason of inflicting terror on someone mainly comes from making one feel disturbed or uncomfortably aware of what's going on. This totally strange ID fully complies that effect. The logo just emerging in this in the logo just emerging in this in the logo just emerging in this in <laughs> the logo just emerging and disintegrating like clay with a bunch of other quirks mixed on it such as an anaglyphic style color filter and strange vocal noises is something really rare to stumble in a station ID especially in a manner that makes it as trippy as this yeah i agree it's a bit trippy and yes, I don't find the other VPRO bumpers as scary anymore, except that one where someone's eye breaks into one of the zooming glasses. I don't really get how this isn't as disturbing as a bunch of chroma key, key chroma keyed mouths just singing. Yeah. Yeah, but like, what was that? Hold on. Yeah, 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 now I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, now that one looks very creepy as hell. Alright, number number nine is Georgia TV Mwambe News from Georgian SSR 1971. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty unsettling vibe I get from this already. With these Georgian characters just just shooting that shit, like, yeah. This is one of the contenders I didn't really find that unnerving while seeing it for the first time, but you gotta understand the context of seeing this. In the dark with almost no one near you. Alright. I can't really judge the font choices here because this is in the Georgian language out of all places. But the way the main logo zooms quickly at you with the subtle bells kicking in and the alternation between scrolling walls of text or an imposing logo shooting right in front of you makes yourself not sure what's to come. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, that 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 was a mouthful for me to talk, but yeah, that was a that was a mouthful for me to say, but yeah, still. This is also one of the three news intros that I'll be showing here as a way to fill up missing spots with contenders I do find worthy to comment on what, what they're especially that spooky. Not much on how they are designed, but what it does with getting the viewer engaged and attracted. Pretty much the main rule when it comes to labeling something like that. Yeah, that number, that number was pretty spooky. Uh, number eight, two for the price of one, considering these IDs were showcased in particularly similar, similar scenarios. Anyone who is from the UK primarily knows what I'll be talking. Uh, oh, there's a... BBC and ITV's go to the... Uh, hold on. What was that? Uh, uh, number eight is BBC and ITV's Royal Death Idents, uh, UK 1997 and 2021, respectively. Normal programs have been suspended for the moment. This means that this afternoon's edition of EastEnders has been postponed, and we hope to show that next Sunday. We'll bring you details of other changes to our programs as soon as possible. This is BBC Television. Now, the one o'clock news with Peter Sissons. Following the news of the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh today, oh, no. James Mates presents a special documentary looking at the life of the prince. That's, that's very sad news. Honestly, like someone from the royal family died. That, that's pretty sad. Well, not much of a surprise here considering royal deaths are generally a common thing to experience at least once as a British resident. Tragic as it is, I'll be obviously talking more about the 1997 BBC Princess Diana case since it was the most unexpected. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I gotta agree, you know. When I first heard of Princess Diana and looked her up on Wikipedia, you know, and noticed that she died at a very young age, I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty scary. This particular BBC item showcased in some, if not all of its stations, doesn't come really creepy at sight, but the announcement of the news flash combined with the funeral darkness of it just does highlight that moment. Nothing, nothing about the event is said during the interruption until it turns into, a, into, the, into the spotlight once it fades out. This was used solely as an emergency item, but its main trace of evidence pertaining to Diana's death is the, is, is the only case of its use nowadays. Now with the ITV one. Generally, I think Prince Philip's case isn't that shocking because he, because he died at a really old age, age 99. That's, that's pretty, pretty surprising. But this particular item is still as mournful. The ITV logo sits in an almost black BG while the announcer reports about a documentary of his life. Other bumpers at the day of this of the situation used a still of the channel's logo, logos requesting to tune to ITV News in regards of this announcement. Wow. This item, however, was aired one day after this event, so it isn't as sudden as the BBC Diana case. BBC aired a monochrome breaking news screen in comparison during the announcement of Philip's death. Yeah. Pretty, pretty shy. Now, before we go to the, to the top six spots, I will be making a that didn't make the list section here. Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Australia 1966. As much as I want to give this one credit, I don't think I would include this one on the list yet because most of the disturbing elements of the logo are from the first part of it, which are still missing. The beginning of the 1967 ABC Idol showcased the company's new logo acting as, an, uh, acting as an oscilloscope of sorts while unnerving loud sounds were playing in the background. I found myself searching for this certain part of this logo for years with no outcome whatsoever. Antenna 10 from, uh, a 10 2 from France, 1975. This definitely seems like it would become one of the strong contenders of the list, but over the time I found this ID in particular. But over the time, I found that this ID in particular attempts to be just as trippy and overdramatic rather than unsettling. Scanimate was already like a big thing at the period, so, so the creators behind this particular ID wanted to squeeze all their own efforts from it into a mess of psychedelic infused visual elements swirling around. These days, I just see it as a strong part of its time. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I don't know why. Canal 2, uh, Canal 2 Startup from Belgium, 1995. Definitely in par with, with Antenne 2 for being overly exaggerated. 
All these guys, they would squeeze all that they all they can into this nearly 60 second startup sequence just to lure viewers about this new shit. Canal 2 won't do another branding like this again after it was retired in 1997. They still hold a below average reception among Flemish TV watchers even as they're turning into BE. Okay. Channel 27 Public Access, Connecticut, USA, and what year was that? Uh, 19th summer. Alright. I do find this one a little unnerving, but some people think it's just a, it's just really plain and basic, while others think it's just a boring ID. Well, of course, a logo of a day-night cycle with, this, with the subtle sounds of frogs croaking and cars passing by as the soundtrack is quite to stir up some mixed opinions. So, yeah. Platão Global, Brazil, multiple versions since 1991. This is another of those that do not appear really that unnerving at first sight, but considering that this was often shown at the time of breaking news aimed at unsettling or tragic situations made this news intro an infamous one to various Brazilians. Okay, that's, that's, I, I guess that's pretty interesting. All of the Platão intros seem to be similar in form, but what many consider to be the creepiest version is the 1994 version with the more reflective global logo and the cameras flying more nearly towards the viewer. TV Great Bumper, Spain, 1980. While, while this obviously doesn't count all the Great Bumpers, there are still many ones worth deserving an honorable mention on this list. Either it's the trippy computer visuals, the sound news, or the uncertainty of which specific bumper would be shown as the next. There, there are others that were also more dramatic in tone than what sort of program is being broadcasted. Yeah, the visuals look pretty interesting here. Yeah. Florida Sean from India, 1974. I definitely won't want. I don't. I definitely don't want to include this one in the main spot since many Indians have vivid memories of this item in particular, as it as it is an as it is iconic on 70s 70s to 80s Indian culture. However, many people still misrepresent it for being an eerie and dark in nature at most, concerning its honorable mention spot. ABC5, Please Pray the Rosary, from the Philippines, 1993. Uh, this is another Dor Deshaun case, and while this one can't be really considered as an item in itself, more as a religious promo- Oh my god. Holy shit. Uh, I just- I just looked at the logo pretty closely. I paused at this, and I realized that it's like really giving me a death stare right now. I- I-, I Oh my god, <laughs> they're really scared of what they should have. Many Filipinos have vivid memories of this logo, and this shouldn't be as startling as others that could have been watching it. Wow, I'm just gonna move on from there. That scared the little shit out of me. SBT Christian Bumper from Brazil, the 1980s. Yet another Christian oriented bumper, this 80s relic from, the, from SBT actually did inflict more fear to, uns to unsuspect children in contrast to the, to the Please Pray the Rosary PSA, according to the comments I've read for it. Just something about how it appears suddenly from the dark with a soul light above and Jesus raising up his head while light music and, and preaching announcer play in the background made it just as off-putting for a younger Brazilian in the 1980s. Wow. Uh, number seven is... Television National Chile. Television Nacional de Chile closed down from 1983 in Chile. This doesn't sound creepy to me at all. I love the landscapes. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a little bit more than that. Wow, I love the landscapes. Es administrada por un directorio pluralista, en cuya designación intervienen el presidente de la República y el Senado. A sus siete miembros se agrega un representante de los trabajadores de la empresa. El representante legal de Televisión Nacional es su director ejecutivo, Don Jorge Navarrete Martínez, y su domicilio está ubicado en la casa de la República. I don't see anything scary about En esta jornada que termina, hemos querido estar junto a usted. Con lo mejor de lo nuestro. Muy buenas noches. Oh. Oh. 
Oh god. That took a really dark turn. Holy shit. Wow, that really, really took a dark turn. I, I think it was the sound of like lightning strikes. Like, Jesus Christ, man. Gnarly. Well, of course, how could I write for a disturbing station ID slash rubber list and not include something from a Chilean channel? Channel closedowns in general have been a part of their national television culture and such practice is still in use today. Okay. This one in particular lures us with soothing images of nature while a quaint piano melody plays with the announcer. I know it seems more depressing than, than overall disturbing, but this is still in the, in the heart of many Chileans for either reason. Whether it's the beautiful bittersweet imagery or the fact that's how the channel went to close the day with its lonely shoots of places where no human frequently visits. Wow. And that puts out the reason why this ID is disturbing. It feel and that puts out the reason why this ID takes is disturbing. It feels totally barren to be suited for ending a daily broadcast. Though I definitely see this one more sad if though I definitely see this one more sad if I were really honest. Yeah. It is kind of depressing for some people. Number six is Inter 3 News from France, 1973. Kind of has been unsettling. Kind of reminded me of a, of a train that's about to pass by. Sorry for the quality. It's the best version I could find for now. I don't know what to, what to say about this for now other than it's still the most bizarre news intro music in existence. Yeah, I thought I thought I legit I low key thought this was like the sound of a train passing by, music that sounds like a printer jam at loud levels while the logo just keeps rising up onto the screen. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good analogy right there. Uh, they certainly had the guts to play this in front of one of the largest TV audiences of his time. I mean, this is supposed to come from France, right? They were so obsessed with the avant-garde ideas during the period, they, they also went with making the news seem as shocking as it, as it could be before spa spasming out with Scanimate while the N10-2 staff went to work on with their new branding. Wow. Yeah, they, they really must have the courage. Surely we didn't understand this one at the time. Yeah, I don't get it either. Uh, number five is me. All right, Toledo's Horario del Portacion al Menor from Argentina, 1989. Reminded me a lot of Sesame Street for whatever reason. A partir de este momento, finaliza el horario de protección al menor. La permanencia de los niños frente al televisor queda bajo la exclusiva responsabilidad de sus respectivos padres. Wow, this recently discovered 80s Argentine adaption of Sesame Street did get weird, isn't it? How about this specific custom-made bumper where this Big Bird ripoff character lures children to sleep subtly with the sound of silence and getting asleep in such an unattractive manner? questions regarding stuff like this popping out on TV regularly, like, how the hell did this get into my screen? <laughs> yeah, and how is this perfectly acceptable for, acceptable for a child to sit through this? Let's not talk about, let's not, let's not talk much about the last frame where the, where the costume ends up sleeping with the usual announcer of these kind of horario del pedacion al menor, Argentine watershed bumpers. Yeah, well, of course, it was a different time. Number four is, and subtitles will be provided, UCTV Canal 13, closed down, Chile, 1983. Ha transmitido Universidad Católica de Chile Televisión, miembro de la Organización de Televisión Iberoamericana y miembro asociado de la Unión Europea de Radio y Televisión. Debemos recordarles que toda reproducción parcial o total de esta programación está penada por la ley. Nos despedimos de ustedes muy cordialmente, deseándoles un reparador descanso y un feliz despertar. I feel like it's going to end on a scary note. I'm, I'm going to brace for this now. I'm going to brace for this now. Ah. Oh, 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 man, oh, man, oh. 
is it, is it gonna be, is it gonna give me a jump scare? Uh, oh, it didn't give me a jump scare. Ah, oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> For good reason, this bumper, aside from inducing various nightmares, the children also coined one of the most mimetic phrases in Chilean TV history. Yes, I am talking about, about these three Spanish words. Which are... Oh! Oh, shit! <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, God, that scared the fucking shit out of me, bro. Si Dios quiere, if God wants to. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh god, that scared the shit out of me, dude. What the fuck? Wow. <laughs> well, of course this is the most infamous Chilean closed out ID in existence. The black star field, the UC TV logo slowly zooming in at you, the somber music, and the change to blue near the end before we get greeted with glorious static. Everything about it, is, it just felt out to watch, like... Well, like, I was just, uh, I was just bracing myself, uh, <laughs> and, and, and then I realized I got jump scared by these Spanish words, uh, which were, uh, I think those were the Spanish words for, uh, if God wants to, so, yeah. Again, that scared the shit out of me. You will never wrap yourself out of that one line still, and the fact that UCTV was owned by the Catholic University, there is the obligatory closing question to ask, what if God forbids? God, 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 why? Why do I, why do I watch videos like this at night? That scared me more than like, that arachnophobia EAS scenario, bro. Like, Jesus Christ. What were those flashing words? Hold on. What were those flashing words? Oh my god, they came in so fast. Well, let me actually try again, see if I can actually catch them. Okay, I'll never catch those words. Let's go on. Number three. Oh boy, what's number three? Oh. Oh man. Shibuni Phone Broadcasting closed down from Japan, 1964. Oh, man. Uh, uh, I'm already getting an unsettling feeling about this. Oh, God. Oh, shit. I mean, it's, it sounds pretty somber. Pretty fitting for a bumper from Japan, but... Yeah, uh, let's see what happens. Like it's just showing the village, showing the whole entire city. Oh, and, and this is taking place in France, I think. I think that's the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. It's just continuously zooming out. Zooming out to the point where we're in outer space now. Uh, I don't, I don't like where this is going. Holy shit! And it zoomed out all the way to the fucking Milky Way. <laughs> wow. G J O A R T V J O A R T A M channel. J O A R T V. J-O-A-R-T-A-M 映像出力10kWで送りしました。ああ、ね。サーバーもライクです。あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
Well, oh my god, thank god there was no fucking jump scare like, like the last one, holy shit. Uh, while the UCTV closed down from the 80s is still adored by many, besides also being nightmare fuel for most kids, there's no denying that this, that this is nothing compared to this gorgeous two-minute lullaby that presented by, in uh, Nagoya. Yeah. We are greeted with a kid sleeping at midnight, and the camera moves away from his house, the city surrounding him, the sky, the world, the galaxy, over, over a rendition of the Japanese traditional song, Imayo. Makes sense. It makes sense that something that shares characteristics with the other three la AM items that I have shown earlier, creepy music, darkness, lonely imagery. Yeah, the music was kind of creepy. Like, I was oh! oh, shit! Oh my god! Snowflakes, what is wrong with you? Seriously, what is wrong with you? Holy shit, that, that scared me, dude. Are you, are, you, are you serious, man? Fucking why? Oh my god, oh my god, this is... Oh shit, dude. Oh my god. I, I, I don't know if I can continue on with this anymore. I, I don't know. Oh my god, I, I don't know if I can continue on with this, man. Oh god. Number two. Oh god, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I should put it towards all the background behind this item, if you could possibly call it a real one. This is very similar to the Princess Diana scenario in the most basic terms. Carlos Planque was one of the was one of the national political icons of Bolivia. He held many professions as a musician and a business person and as a politician. Uh, excuse me. He began doing political campaigns in 1988 in the political party Condepa, Consencia de Patria, and became the mayor of the El Alto City. In 1985, he also opened operations for the RTP channel Radio y Televisión Popular. I, I laughed a bit because I, I, I'm not prepared for this right now. I'm not prepared right now. I'm not fucking prepared. He ran for presidency in 1993 with, uh, with this campaign receiving third place in overall votes. Unfortunately, he died of a heart attack in 1997, leading to the breakup of the, of the Condepa party in 2002 and leaving a legacy to various indigenous po politicians, politicians of his home country. Like, like, like even I can't pronounce certain words right at the m Like even I, even I kind of mess up words in the moment because... And even I am starting to like mess up on certain words at the moment because... I, I, I'm, I'm just freaking out right now. I'm not prepared for the number two spot, dude. Jesus. This broadcast dated March 8th of 1997 showed a still, still, still of, of, of the... God. <laughs> showed a still of the mid-90s RTP item with the saddened voice of his friend, Adolfo, announcing the death to, to, to the channel's viewers. We are talking from the system's liberal coordinated pact. Oh. Oh. And that was RTP's announcer announcement of uh, <laughs> announcement of Carlos Plan Plan death, Bolivia, nineteen ninety seven. This is very tragic, dude. I can't. Dude, no. Dude, that's, that's very sad. The, the fact that the house is crying right now, dude, it's just, it's just killing me right now. My goodness gracious. Oh my god. Uh, Freaking me out, man. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can see it's almost over. Oh no, no number one. No. 
No, we're already at the number one spot, dude. Oh, God. Please, for the love of God, don't be a jump scare. Oh, God. Oh, boy, we're at the number one spot. I don't think I'm prepared for this. I mean, the number two pick already killed me with, like, the, the announcer crying about Carlos Planke's Plan death. But, uh, I'm going to pretty good on this one. Oh my god, let's let's just go to the number one pick and get this over with before I lose my Oh my god! Oh freak static Zawarudo beginning of television. That's the number one scariest thing. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip on over. It sounds pretty unsettling as hell. Just listen to that static sound effect, bro. Okay, it's, it's already sounding a bit freaking unsettling right there. Just unsettling as hell. I'm just gonna skip on over to like the, to like the ending here. It's over. Thank God. Curtis, we uploaded the years for making my own top ten. I'm, I'm not reading the whole list for for the sake of time, I guess. Yes, shout out to CCG Films, formerly known as CCG88. This has been a feature from Snowflake's YouTube channel 2021. All rights reserved. Uh, don't be a jump scare at the end. Don't be a jump scare at the end. Ah! Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank God there was no jump scare. And, 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 and would you look at that? Uh, a video about Poppy's Playtime appears on my recommended. Yeah, that's the new video game that, that's popping up. That's like, that. I mean, that's blowing up. Late. That's been blowing up lately, so. Yeah, that was Snowflake's top 16 creepiest national station IDs slash bumpers slash sign-offs by Snowflakes. Oh my god, turn all 38, dude. God, that was so freaking scary. I was not prepared for the top four, dude. Like, literally the number Three and four picks legit gave me a jump scare, bro. And, and, and the number two announcement, it, it literally freaking killed me to, to like hear the announcement, announcer crying about, crying about like an, an important icon's death, you know, particularly in like Bolivia, you know. And like the number one pick is just, it's just really grainy and unsettling, that freaking static noise. I was not prepared for the top four. And like, you know, the un and you know, the unexpected starting when I even saw the number seven pick, and it was just like, you know, pleasant ass music, you know, and it shows like beautiful landscapes, and then all of a sudden, boom, you get lightning, bro. Like that that freaking caught me off guard. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> just oh my god, like oh my god, my I'm not prepared for sleep. <laughs> I I'm not prepared for sleep right now and yeah, just just God help me. Why why do I watch videos like this at night sometimes? God, it's one of the stupidest decisions I've made. But also, but also it's what Donald Thirty Eight requested me to do. So yeah, so okay, so that was uh, the top sixteen previous national station IDs, and uh, yeah, let's take our. Let's take our heads out of this right now and shift our focus into our next video that we're going to be reacting to, which is uh, Sierra Men's Mega Collab on uh, the Orbs Abolition of the Royal Familia. Th this album is an album that I really don't consider an absolute masterpiece in their catalog, but also at the same time, I feel like that it's a really, really, really great album of theirs regardless, so... Yeah, uh, let's just uh, react to the abolition of the Royal Familia Mega Club. Enjoy! Alright, at number 12 we have Providen. Just a nice little uh, in the mood ish track, I guess. It's not one that I refer to often though. Alright, number 11 we have House of Narcotics. Pretty nice track. Wow, I'm surprised to see that uh, Tommy ranked this one number one. Wow. Alright, number 10 we have Say Cheese. 
I, I like the reggae feel to this one a lot. It's a pretty cool track. I like it. Number nine, we have Ital Or. My my scooter is take on or on the word or. Uh, also, this track is really cool as well. I love it actually. So, all right, number five, we have Afros, Afghans, and Angels. Pretty cool ambient this track out there. Alright, and then number seven, you have sleep to you die no matter where you buy. Math, this one is a little bit forgettable right there. Number six, you have days. Me in a good mood, like like it's gonna be sunshine, you know, puts me in a good mood, you know. All right, uh, number five, we have Key of Hearts. Also, another one of the best. I love the, those clunky melodies in, the, in this section in particular, right there. So, yeah. At number four, we have Shapeshifters in two parts. No comment, I just, I just really like this track as well. It's pretty cool. Alright, number six, we have Honey Moodies. This track is just awesome. I, I love, like, the acidish, like, base, vegetation or synths right there. Number two, we have Hawk Kings. This reminds me a lot of like Daft Punk's Revolution 909. Also another one of the best ones right here. And finally at number one, we have the weekend at Rave Forever. Just simply the best track. Like on the whole thing in my opinion. Just wow. Just beautiful, majestic ambientist track. Since this is the last Orb album that has officially been released, it is time for a new artist to cover. By popular demand, the next series is Boards of Canada! Woo! And the Tourism Mega Club uh, already came out, and, that, and that's what I'll be reacting to later on in this video. But yeah, link to the Form of Tourism in the description and comment. Form's already closed, video's already out. So yeah, that was the Mega Collab ranking for uh, the orbs, the abolition of the royal familia uh, by Siriman. And uh, yeah, again, this album is really, really great. Again, it's not a, a, like an album that I would consider a stone cold masterpiece or anything, but th this album is still really, really great. I suggest you go check it out. So yeah. Now, next up, uh, we have another mega clap breaking to react to, and this time, we're going to be reacting to the Mega Clap ranking for Tim Tim Hecker's Haunt Me, Haunt Me, Do It Again. And this time, this Mega Clap ranking was made by Waffles. Apparently, Waffles was inspired by, like, Searman's Mega Clabs, and he was even inspired by my own Mega Clabs. So, so Waffles, if you're watching this, I feel honored that, that, that I have inspired you to do this. So, yeah, and, and, and Tim Hecker is an artist that I really haven't looked deep into when it comes to, you know, his stuff. And, you know, of course, I, I you know, I like ambient music. You know, yeah, I love ambient music. Like, Selected Ambient Works Volume 2 by, by Apex Twin. Fun fact, it's my third favorite album of all time at the moment. And, you know, I especially love Brian Eno's you know, stuff as well. Like, yeah, but yeah, but, but Tim Hecker, though, I'm, I'm, I consider myself a new listener of his work. And I didn't start listening to his stuff until I obviously filled out the form for this album here, Haunt Me, Haunt Me, Do It Again. And uh, honestly, I think this album is like, this is, it's just simply incredible. As my introduction to, to Tim Hecker, it's just an incredible introduction. So <laughs> yeah, uh, now without any further ado, let's react to uh, Waffles' Mega Clap ranking on uh, Haunt Me, Haunt Me, Do It Again by Tim Hecker. Enjoy, guys. Before we begin, I just want to say that the new soundtrack from last month that I didn't know about until just now has been added to the schedule because I thought it was pretty decent. 
Hello, welcome to the Tim Hecker Medical Lab series, where we rank the track lists of Tim Hecker albums from worst to best. This video is on his debut from 2001 that helped put him on the map. Tim, put me on me do it again. I will post links in the description where you can listen to that. But for now, here's the ranking proper. Here we go. Number 9, October. Yeah, I was, a pre I was pretty surprised by the bottom pick here. I, I was not ready to see October take the bottom spot. Like... Like, th this track is really, really amazing. Just, the synth textures on that one are just incredibly... They're, they're just ridiculously beautiful. Just, wow. Number 8. Arctic Lovers Rock. The title kind of sounds like a song that Elton John would make. You know, because, you know, Crocodile Rock, but... Damn, like the synth texture on that one as well. Like the, like the cold, isolated melodies on that one. It's just beautiful as well. Number seven, City in Flames in three parts. Yeah, I, I already did at the bottom because I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a, I'm like, like the synth textures, they're, they're not as good as the other tracks on here, but otherwise, even this one is, is still, is still good to great. Just because I ranked it at the bottom, like, keep in mind, just because I ranked it at the bottom doesn't mean I outright hate it, because I don't. I, I think it's still, you know, a good track regardless, so I like it. Number 5A, Music for Tundra. I knew this one would be a big standout to me on first listen. Just, wow, the atmosphere I get from this is, is just incredible. Night Flight to Your Heart. Still a great track, even though I ranked it this well. I, I, I love the guitars on this a lot. I, I guess, I, I think, yeah, like, sounds of guitars playing in there, I like it. It kind of, it kind of, like, like, I, I have a theory on this, like, like, there's this, there's this album that I released this year called, um, uh, I call it the search. I know exactly where you are. Um, um, and it, <clears throat> you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of this album that came out like literally at the beginning of this year called uh, "I've Called Up the Search." I know exactly where you are by uh, Katya Crow, which which like it incorporated like like for the most part it incorporated like you know guitars in with like ambient synth, te synth textures. So so my theory on this is that. The, tracks like this kind of inspired Katya Pro to make, you know, tracks, you know, that that they would make on, uh, or 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 she would make on, uh, you know, on her on the on her album. I call it the Search. So yeah, that, that's just my theory. That's just my speculation here. So Number yeah, Borderlands. I also love the synth textures on that one as well. Sorry if I'm like being repetitive here, but that's that's my point right there. Just the textures on that are just beautiful. It's just it's just bringing me life. Ghost writing. Man, what can I say about this track? Like, like where do I begin? Like, honestly, it's just one of the most beautiful tracks I've ever heard in my entire life. Probably my favorite track from Tim Hecker so far overall. Number two, the work of art in the age of cultural overproduction. I can understand why someone would be considered the best track. But yeah, still though, I, I love the heavy metal like edge I get from this one. Even, even if I went with this one, I love seven. You know, I still love it. This one kind of makes me feel like, you know, I'm on another planet. Like, you know, like, it feels like I'm traveling through, like, the Milky Way galaxy, you know? Or, or the solar system. You know, that's inside the Milky Way galaxy, obviously. So, yeah. That's the ranking. I did also ask these participants to rate the album on a scale from 1 to 10 optionally, and as a result, the average rating for this album is an 8.4. Shoutouts to Great. these people who participated in this video. 
you guys rule. I've provided some extra comments from them in the description for anyone that's interested. If you would like to participate, there is a form in the description that you can fill out from now to this coming Sunday. Yeah, I already filled out the form for you more. The next video will be on the sophomore effort radio or more, where Tim started discovering his own signature sound. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Yeah, so that was the mega collab ranking for Tim Hecker's Haunt Me, Haunt Me, Do It Again. And yeah, this mega collab ranking was made by Waffles. So, um... Yeah, let's just, let's just go to the description of this video and check out everybody's overall thoughts. So, yeah, here we go. Waffles says, such a solid debut. One of my overall favorites from the guy. Pretty good place to start listening. If any of you are reading this, I'd like to give a shout out to the Rare Tradewinds White Noise EP because if I could get my hands on, I would include in this series as well. It's a really good EP. And he rated an 8 out of 10. Hmm, Trey wins White Noise EP. Th this sounds interesting. I, 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 should, I should really go check this out sometime. Of course, after I, you know, listen, after I uh, listen to the entirety of his studio album, Discography. I said, man, as an introduction to Tim Hecker, this album was absolutely incredible. I never really expected to enjoy this one as much as I did. But goddamn, this is one of the most unique ambient albums I have ever heard in my life. I love every single track on here. Every track on here is unique in their own way, so the ranking for this album was really hard for me to put together as a result. Beautiful album, absolute must-listen, and I gave it a 9 out of 10. Yeah, just incredible album. Sirman said, My goodness, this was such an amazing listen. The cohesiveness and flow of this project is incredible. As someone who has only listened to parts of Hecker's discography, this has me really excited to delve deeper. Incredible album, and he also rated a solid 9. Yeah, I agree with you. Dinky says, I'm going to be completely honest here. This is the first time I listened to Tim Hecker. Same. <laughs> but man, is this album a fantastic first impression of the man. I love the ambient tone throughout as, as well as how experimental with sounds this album gets as it progresses. It makes you feel like you're wandering through an arctic tundra. Overall, it's definitely one of the more stronger ambient albums out there and I highly recommend listening to this album in full, especially if you're feeling stressed as it's, a good, as it's such a good way to relax your mind. And he also rated it a 9. Yeah. Like, like, you know, it's, like I said, this is just an incredible album from start to finish. I love every single track on here. Like I said, this is just, this was just really hard for me to put together, this whole ranking. Even, even the tracks that I placed towards the bottom, they're great, alright? <laughs> like, like every track on here is like, good to great at the very least. And, uh, yeah, that was the, uh, Hot Me Mega Collab. And for the last video we're going to be reacting to for today, we're going to be reacting to the Mega Collab ranking for Boards of Cannabis 2 And this Mega Collab ranking was made by Sierraman. Uh, just ending things off with, uh, with uh, a Mega Collab made by Sierraman. So, yeah, uh, Tuism, pretty awesome EP. And yeah, let's let's just uh, react to the mega clap for that EP. So yeah, enjoy, guys. All right, at number nine, we have Ice Cooley. It's a pretty cool track. I like it. This the the cool synth is pretty cool, I guess. But yeah, number eight, we have 1986 Summerfire. Which was actually, which was actually paired up with Smoke's Quantity. Fun fact. But yeah, this is a pretty, this is a, this is a pretty cool way to close out the EP. Just like you know, these the synth textures right here, they're they're beautiful. It's a it's a pretty cool way to close out the EP. Number seven, we have Melissa Juice. Yeah, I don't really like this one that much. You know, the you know, like the production just goes like in one ear, like, like I noticed this, like, 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 you know, I noticed that when I listened to this track, like, 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 the production just goes in, like, probably, like, the right channel, it's pretty noticeable when I, when I, like, wear my headphones and stuff, so, yeah, Melissa Juice, uh, I don't really like it that much, um, but, yeah, alright, 
number 6 of Beast Tree. It's a pretty good track. Kind of like the dark, down tempo vibe this one was going for. Even if I raped it near the bottom. Number 5, we have Oerectine, or Oerectine, however you pronounce it. The hip hop dish production combined with these like pretty awesome synths here. It's just pretty cool. I love it. Alright, number four we have See You Later. This kind of reminds me a lot of like some of some tracks from like Bonobo's to be Bonobo's to be album. Anyways, number three we have Tourism. Another awesome track. Again, the, the synths are here are just plain freaking beautiful. Number two, we have Smoke's Quantity. Again, just beautiful track. And finally, at number one, we have 69er. I'm very happy with its placement here. Well deserved. One of my all-time favorite POC tracks ever. Form for the Fantastic High Crazy Bean description in the comments. I already filled out the form for that. So, uh, yeah, that was the Mega Clap ranking for Boards of Canada's Tourism. And again, this Mega Clap ranking was made by Searman. Uh, be before I end this video, and before I state my overall thoughts on the EP, I just want to check out everyone else's thoughts in the description. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't fill out, like, the, the last section for that form for uh, Tourism because I didn't, I didn't know that he was putting, you know, everyone's thoughts in the description, but... Yeah, um, Waffle says, Base free took me by surprise this time, but other than that, this is still one of the weaker BOC releases for me. It's got its moments for me, though. I'll be coming back to anything number four and up. Decent stuff. Cam says, this was my first time listening to a BOC project all the way through, and I did not regret it a single bit. This EP was absolutely great. I agree with you on that, except that I think that it's beyond great. I think it's a pretty fantastic EP, alongside the next one, High Scores. Uh, yeah, Farstar says, finally, Boys of Canada, yeah! Yeah, about time. Johnny says, Bass Free sounds like Burial having an elliptic fit. <laughs> pretty, pretty bizarre analogy, but yeah, that, that, that's probably what I would have thought otherwise. Also, I didn't, I didn't know that Johnny has Discord. Wow. Uh, Source says, yeah, uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of, of this one. I hope the other Boards of Canada releases are better. 69 and Roy Rectine I kind of dig though. Trust me. I, trust me, there, there's going to be better releases ahead. Of course, you got high scores. But then you also got Music as the Right to Children and GeoGaddy, which are, like, among my favorite albums of all time. GeoGaddy is actually my favorite album from these guys. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we have a few more statements here. AVR says, definitely not a favorite among the other EPs, but I still recommend it. Matthew GH says, it's pretty okay. I don't think it's it's usually for me since the songs are so long, but I can get into a decent bit of them. O only one I didn't li really like was Bass Free. I really like the weird melodies, though. Yeah, I like the melodies on, like, pretty much every track on there, except the one for Melissa Juice. Yeah, that one I just didn't like that much, like I said before. Uh, yeah, Max says, Rank says, Bass Free is so damn cool. I agree, even though I ranked it at number eight, so... Yeah, uh, Kalix says, this EP is a, is a great debut. Even though they made way better albums after, still great nonetheless, some tracks are really good. And finally, the big one from Dinky. And he says, so here we are, finally tackling another one of the, one of the three IDM giants. Although I personally think BOC are the weakest of the three, it was very hard to come to, come to that conclusion since most of their music kicks so much ass. Pretty much agreed on that statement. Uh, th this album being a perfect uh, this album be being a perfect example of that. It's, it's, it's an EP, but whatever. Tourism simultaneously evokes nostalgia in me and absolutely terrifies me. Something you don't usually experience when listening to an album, and that's pretty much how I feel when I when I when I listen to freaking Geo Daddy. 
which just further shows how talented these two are. Overall, I really enjoyed this album, even though I don't think it's their best. We'll get on to that one. We'll get to that one in three weeks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tourism is a pretty fantastic EP. I'm pretty happy to see that. Um, so that some people like this. I, I see that other people thought it was okay. But again, this this EP is fantastic. I recommend it in every sense of the word. A uh, pretty great way to start off the career of these two legends. So, yeah, that was the two is a mega collab, and we finally made it to the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Share this one with your friends if you want to, and leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe as we're on the road to 7,000 subscribers. Apologies if this uh, video was uh, uploaded at a pretty late time. Busy stuff again, but hopefully next week we can get back into the full swing of things and actually upload the next episode at, at an earlier time. So, yeah. That's it, peoples. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a great Halloween. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys. Mm -hmm.